you can tell that it's ready by the way it nappes up off of the spatula. You see that? It just has a certain viscosity. You have to get a feel for it. Too much air knocked out of this. And of course, this is gonna run like crazy. Too little air taken out and not mixed enough. And it's gonna have the consistency that's being a lot more airier, a lot more spongier. You don't want that either. That leads to faults. Now, what some people talk about is the criticality of the bag. I've always liked using disposable plastic bags because they're more hygienically correct. And then we go into this whole business about well, what size tip do you want to use on the bag? I don't even use a metal or a plastic pastry tip. Why? Because I just wind up snipping the end of the bag to the appropriate size. Now here's the thing about doing this. The larger the aperture or opening on the tip, the more fluid the mix is going to be coming through the bag, right? The smaller the size of the tip to cutting the bag, you're actually running the risk of knocking air out of the bag as it's being piped through. Simple physics, right? So you want to make sure that the tip on the bag is large enough so that as you're squeezing the macaroon mixture through the bag, you're not really knocking any additional air out. I'm going to fill the bag to see what I'm talking about. The only thing about plastic bags is they have these little side walls sometimes on both sides of the bag. This particular one just has it on one side. I'm going to cut till about there. Okay. That's about what you're looking for. is what I call wrapping. When you wrap the macaroons, usually on a trash container, you want to wrap with this type of pressure. Don't wrap with a forward motion type sweep. You're basically, when you're going to tamp out or wrap out the macaroons, you're taking the air bubbles out. If you don't do this, you're going to get these little tiny balloons of air bubbles that come up all over the place. So this is actually a very, very important step. And you can't skip it. I can't stress how incredibly important it is for you to dry the macaroons. Drying the macaroon, what it does is it gets a crust on the dough and it just dries the dough. 
okay? If you don't properly dry that dough, so that what happens is once it starts baking with bottom heat and starts springing up, it's gonna crack. And in so doing that, even on a day like this, being here in South Florida, on a humid, hotter than hell day, it's probably at least, I'd say, maybe close to 95, maybe 96 degrees in this kitchen right now. And it's humid, there's a lot of humidity in here. I can feel it. You know, there's not any steam kettles going off, which is a concern. There's nobody cooking any kind of soup stocks right now. It's just me. On the other side of this wall, there's a line where they've got saute station, there's a grill, there's a fry station. Believe it or not, that kind of stuff throws off a lot of heat, but it also throws off a bit of humidity as well. And these hoods in this kitchen don't work right. There's no return ventilation on the air So whatever heat is in this kitchen, it's pretty, pretty stagnant. You've got a fan right over there. There's another fan right over here. It helps, but it's not enough. This is a Vulcan convection oven. Actually, in Vulcan is one of the better ovens to be able to make these macaroons. Why? Because the doors are lightweight. What that allows for when you make the macaroons is venting of the air. Now, you saw this in the video that I produced a few years ago when I was working with Dina DeLuca. I used a really old dinosaur of an oven when I made those macaroons back then, and it seemed to have worked fairly well. Aside from just air drying the macaroons for maybe the better part of an hour at ambient temperature, you can actually force air dry the macaroons. It's a little technique that I developed a number of years ago, and it works. Here's the thing that you've got to be really, really careful about this. If you apply too much heat to the macaroons, if the doors are pried open, but they're not open enough, and there's not enough proper airflow moving that hot air over the macaroons and out of the oven, you're gonna actually start baking the macaroons right then and there as they're drying. And you don't want that. You want them just to dry. You wanna like seal that crust, seal that dome, and get your macaroons good to go so that you can actually start baking them off and expedite cooking them. You're actually baking the macaroons. You don't wanna bake them at a high fan speed. You want to reduce the fan speed to low. There's a reason behind it. If the macaroons bake at a high fan speed inside the oven with a convection, with that rotor blade going, you're actually disrupting the macaroon. This is what I found over years of experience. And they can sometimes, they can shift, they can, they can slide, they can crack. You don't want that. So, all intents and purposes for the moment until we actually finish drying the macaroons. You want to keep them not hot, but when they're ready to go in, you're actually ready to start baking them. You want to flick it down. Take these pans 180 degrees. 
applying a lot of heat to the back side of those macaroons. Okay, so the macaroons have properly dried. Got a nice crust on them. And now that the macaroons are properly dried, we're ready to put them into the oven. The thing is, and this is a big mistake, you don't want to overload the oven. Sometimes, sometimes the convection ovens, particularly if they're older or it might just depend on the brand of the convection oven, there is not actually 100% perfect airflow going out and about throughout the entire oven. So by overloading the oven, you're actually constricting airflow and the problem is, is some of the fans, whether they be on the top, on the bottom, or in the middle, they may not actually get baked properly. So my recommendation is, if you made a batch, which is what? A double batch is five sheet pans. A single batch is based on 600 grams of TPT or top of the pump. It's gonna yield you about roughly two to three sheet pans if you're doing them at about this size. Putting them in, right in the center of the rack so you have a proper airflow on the sides and in the front and in the back remember what I said you want to reduce the oven speed on the fan down to low that is very very important set the timer We're going to set it at about roughly nine minutes to start. Now what's happening in this early stage of baking is really, really critical. The macaroons are developing heat, they're beginning with the initial baking, and that shell, having crisp up, is starting to move up. But at about the nine minute mark, or there just slightly there before, you need to rotate the pans because once again, there is convection air, and though the oven is on a lower fan setting, what happens sometimes with the macaroons is they can slide. And you don't want them. You want, you want them to come up fairly consistently, and you don't want them to actually slide or pivot on one. It's also pretty important to know that if I were to open the door right now, while the eggs are beginning to coagulate and they're just initially getting that set, you could run the risk of them caving in on themselves and they don't come up at all. In other words, they don't start developing feet. I'm going to show you a time lapse as they're baking of them developing feet. So as you can see, they're coming up really nicely. I want to rotate these guys at about this point. Now I want to show you something really, really important. The macaroons on the bottom, with more bottom heat rising to the top, are coming up inconsistently, whereas the ones on the top look really, really terrific. And I'm going to show them to you right now with the way they look. You see what's happening with the ones on the bottom? Now look at the ones on the top. You see that? Why is that? Heat rises even inside the oven. It circulates directly straight through, coils up and comes back around. So this is the motion. Where do you think the most heat is going to be? 
it's going to be on the bottom. Like I said, at 290, I told you about Vulcan being one of the better ovens out there. So, what are you going to do about it? You're going to move everything to the top, as far up as it'll go, knowingly realizing the subtle nuances of this particular type of oven. You've got to work with the, what you got. There's no other choice outside of just knowingly realizing that, hey, that oven could be out of calibration. I'm sitting at a 290. I haven't actually checked that temperature to make sure that it actually is 290. It could be higher. It could even be lower. But I know for a fact that at about, what is it? Almost coming up on the eight minute mark, having rotated the pans, that we're just about where we need to be for another technique that I'm going to show you to preserve the color of the finished macaroon on Okay, there goes the timer. That's at about the nine minute mark. The next step. I'm going to take an inverted sheet pan. I'm going to put it over the top of the macaroons to preserve the color of the macaroon. These look great. The ones on the top. I'm going to set the oven for about another five to maybe six minutes. Set it about to, let's say, five minute mark. You see that pigmentation on the finished macaroon? They're not 100% done yet. If I take them out now, they could actually collapse on themselves. I'm gonna keep them in there for a little while longer. And then putting them back in the oven, it allows them just to dry for maybe, I would say, Two more minutes. So that was a total of nine plus five plus two, or a total of what, 16 minutes in the oven. That extra two minutes is really, really critical because in having removed the top inverted sheet pan and now allowing them to dry, I'll be able to dry up the surface of the macaroons. 